Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you tuning in tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we uh, come to you on our different platforms, social media, Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify. Amen. And we thank God that you have found this broadcast. Praise the Lord. And I pray I may say something today to help you. Hallelujah. To encourage you. Thank you, Jesus. And hopefully to drive some of you to salvation. Amen. Which we believe is Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We believe that that is the plan of salvation. And if you do not obey Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, you will not make it into glory. Amen. You must change your life by repentance and be forgiven in the, by the blood of Jesus with baptism. Tonight, I hope to encourage you um, as we read out of the book of First Kings, chapter number 17. Praise the Lord. First Kings, chapter number 17. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the Lord I'm sorry, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Sherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Make sure I didn't lose anyone here. Verses 1 through 4. It talks about in verse 1 how there is basically going to be a famine. Amen. A shortage of supply. There will be no more rain nor dew on the earth. Praise the Lord. And when there's no rain or dew, then plants can't grow. Trees can't grow, amen. Vegetables can't grow. You see how that will all, praise the Lord, we see that in the world today. Amen. The prices of food is going up, amen, because of droughts in certain areas. There was an increase in the price of avocados because the place, I believe it was California, where they're grown at, amen, has started to not see rain. And so, it was hurting the supply. Thank you, Jesus. We see that with a lot of crops. Praise the Lord. We saw it, amen, with a lot of uh, items in the world today. And a lot of times they blame it on war. But sometimes they also blame it on drought. Praise the Lord. There was an extended period of time where places on earth had not seen water or seen rain or snow. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it affected the prices of other items. Thank you, Jesus. So we see how here in verse 1, the effect. Some people read this and think, oh, it's not going to rain for a extended period of time. There won't be dew on the earth for an extended period of time. But when you start to think of how important uh, precipitation is, praise the Lord, then you see the effects of how it can have on the world. Without the rain or snow or precipitation, praise the Lord, or the dew on the ground, praise the Lord, the water will dry up, lakes will dry up, streams will dry up, praise the Lord, amen. Water level in the sea starts to sink, praise the Lord, causing issues. And in the midst of all this, hallelujah, God encouraging his servants, letting his servant know 
I'm going to take care of them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May not be the way you want him to take care of you, but he's going to provide. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May not have a T-bone steak, a porterhouse, rib out, ribs. Praise the Lord. God said, I'm going to provide for you. Even if I have to cause an old dirty bird to come and feed you, I'm going to provide for you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Now, some of us are so what we call, uh, what they call, bougie. <laughs> If a bird dropped you off some food, I ain't eating that. That came from the bird feet. <laughs> but if you're hungry, you'll eat. And the other aspect of this is if God told you that's how he's going to feed you, and then you see it come to pass that that is how he's feeding you, now you're encouraged to eat from him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some of us are even so stuck up that even if God told us that he would feed us by a bird, when the bird dropped it off, he said, I ain't eating that. Although God told you it would happen that way, you still wouldn't even want it. Mm. Praise the Lord. But I want to encourage you today that God's got our back. Praise the Lord. This scripture came to mind as we were singing the song, Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. Praise the Lord. He'll fix it. After a while. Sometimes we're going to suffer. Sometimes we're going to go through. Sometimes you'll go through a drought in your life. You Got to hold on. Believe God is going to fix it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So here in verse 4, it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. The brook is Amen. The stream of water. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 5. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith. That is before Jordan. Amen. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. You get hungry, you start looking in the sky, wondering, what a bird coming? <laughs> he didn't even eat lunch. He had breakfast in the morning, amen, and he had food in the evening. He skipped lunch. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, he was probably hungry, looking in the sky, wondering, well, Lord, when is the bird coming? Praise the Lord. Amen. But when you look up, waiting for the bird to come, you're living in the expectation. You're living in the belief and in the faith that God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. He's going to take care of it. He's going to fix it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You got to stay encouraged. Don't, don't, don't get so doubtful in your mind. Praise the Lord. When people doubt in their mind, they start to change their walk with God. Praise the Lord. Because now you're starting to lose faith. But we're not of them who lose faith. We're going to hold on. We got to hang in there. No matter how it looks on the outset, we got to stick it out. Y'all remember a few weeks ago we talked about the word patience? Anybody remember what patience means? Patience. Long suffering. Amen. Long suffering. To stick it out. To endure. Amen. To hang in there. No matter what's happening, we got to hang in there. No matter what it looked like, we have to endure. Praise the Lord. All right, verse number six. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, 
and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Verse 7, and it came to pass after a while that the brook did what? Dried up. Now, wait a minute, Lord. You told me to drink from the brook. How are you going to dry the brook up? You told me to drink from this stream of water. I've been drinking from it all this time, and now you're going to dry it up? This can't be God if it dries up, right? Hmm. These are people's minds are starting to doubt when things don't look quite like they want it to look. Where's your faith? No matter what it looks like, you have to continue to trust in him. Woo-wee. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No matter what it looks like. Praise the Lord. Yes, God is blessed. He's blessed you for a long time. And now the blessing that he's given you seems to not be much of a blessing anymore. The blessing he gave him was the brook, the stream of water, and now the stream is dried up. Praise the Lord. What's going on here, Lord? Huh? You supposed to take care of me? Amen. Do I need to walk away from you now? Praise the Lord. Amen. So the brook dried. What verse we at? Lost my spot here. Seven. First Kings chapter 17 and verse 7. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. But God already told him it wasn't going to rain, right? Nor would there be dew. Verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. She's going to provide for you. See how God navigates us? Amen. Amen. He may not want you in the same place all your life. Right? Amen. He may not want you stuck in that same area, that same place, the same merry-go-round that you've been in all your life. Yeah, you've been blessed where you are. But sometimes God says, okay, it's time to move. Praise the Lord. Look at me. When I was in I should say us. <laughs> when I was in North Carolina, I was comfortable there. Right? Comfortable. Deacon in the church. Teach every now and then. Just shout and praise God. Fellowship, having fun. One day, God says, it's time to move. Time to switch your environment. Praise the Lord. I want to talk to me. It's time to switch your environment. Time to change your atmosphere. Praise the Lord. Well, you've been comfortable eating from the raven. You've been comfortable drinking from the brook. You've been comfortable. Let me move you now to another area. Praise the Lord. And another area doesn't have to be another state or another city. Amen. Praise the Lord. It could be another place spiritually. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to move, time to shift. Praise the Lord. Look at the shift that, praise the Lord, Elijah is going through. After drinking from the brook for so long and eating from the raven, you get a little comfortable where you are. And when the brook dried up, God said, don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> I got you. Let me navigate you somewhere else. Let me guide you somewhere else. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to move. Verse 9. Well, verse 10. So he took, told him to go to the widow. She's going to sustain thee. She's going to provide for thee. Verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath. He was obedient, wasn't he? He didn't say, no, Lord, you better make it rain because I'm comfortable right here where I'm at. I'm not moving where you told me to go, where you're navigating me to. I want to stay right here, and you better keep letting that bird come by and bring me flesh in the morning and flesh in the evening and bread. Praise the Lord. He didn't fight God when God was shifting him around, navigating him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A new era in your life, a new, praise the Lord, a new... Comfort zone. Amen. That's the problem sometimes that people get in a comfort zone. Amen. I believe Marvin Sapp got a song called Comfort Zone. He said, I'm coming out of my comfort zone. Praise the Lord. I had to look the words up. I forgot. I can remember it if I sing it more than I try to talk it to you. I can't remember it. And I know y'all don't want to hear me sing, so I'm going to have to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord He's all coming out of my comfort zone To a place that I've never known Amen Praise the Lord I like that song But look at, look at Elijah so he, so he arose And went to Zarephath And when he came to the gate Of the city behold the widow woman Was there gathering Of sticks and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. He was thirsty. The brook dried up. He was thirsty. Amen. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. I, I, I need some food, too. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in the cruise. Praise the Lord. I got a little oil in the jar. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it. Praise the Lord. I'm going to prepare it for me and my son. Not for you, Elijah, but for me and my son. That we may eat and die. In other words, she said, we're about to eat our last meal. We ain't got nothing else. It ain't been raining, right? So she can't create anything else. She can't plant anything else, right? Because there's a drought in the land. So this just didn't affect Elijah. God was just taking care of Elijah. Amen. But God said, I want to take care of somebody else too, so... I, I want you to go over here, Elijah, and I want to do a miracle. Go and there's a widow. Um, she's going to take care of you. Now, look at the circumstances. Some of us will walk up to this woman and say, oh, you ain't got nothing to eat? Well, Lord, what the heck you talking about? Lord, you made me think this woman was going to have abundance because you said she's going to sustain me. But she ain't even got nothing for herself. She only got a little bit of meal and oil. And she's going to prepare this last meal for her and her son. They're going to enjoy it. But then they ain't got nothing. And they're going to die of starvation. Because nothing else can grow. Look how it looks like the odds are set against him. Sometimes God will send you to a place when you shift, you, when your life shifts, your life shifts, it looks like, it may seem like there's nothing good that's coming out of it. When your life shifts, praise the Lord, it may look like it's, it, it, it ain't going to work out. I, I feel alone. I feel, praise the Lord, that like, 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 like there's nothing else that I can do. I'm just, where, where do I go? What do I do? 
Let's go. And God's like, just trust me. As simple as that is, just trust me. Praise the Lord. Lord, if you sent me to this place, how am I going to be taken care of in this place, in this area of my life, in this season of my life? How am I going to be taken care of when it seems like a drought? When it seems like there's nothing fruitful around me that's happening. Hallelujah. Seems like only bad things, bad luck, if you want to call it that. It just seems like this bad scenarios just continue to pile up on me. It's a drought. Amen. And God is saying, just trust me. Just trust me. I'm navigating your life. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I'm navigating your life. Praise the Lord. You have to have a strong mindset when walking with God. Because in this scenario, God told Elijah, go to the widow and she's going to sustain thee. And when something sustains you, that means it's enough. Praise the Lord. When something sustains you, that means they're providing for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. But looks like the odds are set against him because how can this woman sustain me when she just told me I don't even got no food for me and my son? I'm about to prepare. We're going to eat it. We're going to die. That's, that's it. And watch this. Verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Look, don't, <laughs> don't be afraid. Hallelujah. This stranger walking up to you saying, give me something to eat. And you tell him, I ain't got nothing, but this is just for me and my family. And he said, don't have no, have no fear. What do you mean have no fear? I don't even know you. <laughs> right? Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. But make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after make, and after Make for thee and thy son. All right? You say you ain't got nothing but enough for you and your son. I'll tell you what you do. Go do what you're going to do. Make me mine first. And then afterward, make you and your sons. Praise the Lord. For thus said the Lord God of Israel. Verse 14. The barrel of meal shall not waste. Amen? The flour shall not be used up. That's what that means. The barrel of meal shall not waste. The Lord said, it ain't gonna, the flour is not gonna be used up. It's gonna always continue to be there. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Neither shall that jar of oil that you got, it ain't gonna run out. Praise the Lord. Until the day that the Lord sent the rain upon the earth. It ain't going to, the flowers going to always be there. The oil is going to never run out until God sent rain upon the earth. Praise the Lord. Now, some of us in this position will say, nah, I'll take my chances. Me and my son will just eat our last meal. And we'll die. But it even took faith from this woman to say, well, <laughs> Things are, things can't get worse than what they are now. Might as well try it. <laughs> if the Lord said it, I don't know this man, but he said the Lord said it, uh, might as well try it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Verse 15, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Now they ate many days when she only had enough for not even a whole day. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things 
the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was sore, that there was no breath left in him. So now her son's about to die. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? She thought her son was dying because of something she did. Praise the Lord. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee? Oh, verse 19. Uh, 1 Kings 17, chapter 17, and verse 19. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him unto a loft, praise the Lord, unto an upper room, where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, Hast thou also brought evil upon this widow with whom I sojourn, with whom I'm lodging with, whom I'm staying with by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him, hallelujah, again, and he revived, he became alive. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber, took him down from the upper room into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, see, thy son living. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Praise the Lord. She didn't know that he was a man of God until this happened. Praise the Lord. Even if she had doubts if he was a man of God, when this happened, she said, now I know. But that goes to show us that faith is not seeing it, but believing it. Praise the Lord. She didn't know that Elijah was the man of God, but she said, you know what? Might as well go ahead and do what he said. Let me cook the food for him first. And let me, it seemed like that would have been enough for her to know that he was a man of God. Let me cook his food first. And when I cook his food first, he said the flour ain't going to go nowhere. He said the oil going to continue to stay in that jar. And it happened many days. Praise the Lord. Seemed like that was enough. But sometimes people need more proof. <laughs> Her son was dying. Amen. And then he was revived. Thank you, Jesus. And look at what happened. Eli he was dead, right? Elijah stretched himself over him how many times? Three. Three times. Praise the Lord. Jesus died on the cross. They put him in a grave how many days? Three. Son of God died in the grave three days and then revived. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he lives forevermore. Praise the Lord. Just like this woman, her son lived. Praise the Lord. And it brought joy to the mother. Amen. Jesus lives and it brings joy to our souls. So we should trust him. Just trust me. Just trust me. That's all God wants. No matter how things may look, you may be going through a drought in your life. See, people's droughts look differently. Some have lost loved ones, right? Some have had... <laughs> 
finance challenges. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm of, I mean, there's many different droughts we can have. Praise the Lord. But we got to understand that we must continue to trust God and let him navigate our life. Just because it's terrible to you, God says, I know what I'm doing. I'm not to navigate you. When the brook dried up with Elijah, what did he do? He navigated him. To who? The widow. And when he got to the widow, it didn't look like the best place, did it? It didn't look like she was going to be able to provide for him, did it? But it happened because they trusted and had faith. Praise the Lord. So I want to leave you with that tonight. No matter how it looks, God is saying, just trust me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for you in Jesus' name. Facebook, YouTube, and all of you who may be listening to us on Spotify. Amen. God bless you. I hope I said something to encourage you tonight in Jesus' name. If you're watching this on Facebook, I encourage you to go to our YouTube page and subscribe. New Ransom Jesus Church. Also go to Spotify. It's free. You can download our podcast, New Ransom Jesus Church there. Any other platform where you're watching, if you're not if you're on Spotify or YouTube, I encourage you to go to our Facebook page and like our page there and hit that notification button so that you know when we go live in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. I hope I said something to encourage you. And everybody be blessed. We'll see you Sunday at 11 o'clock in Jesus' name. Amen.